everybody, what's going on? I'm out here at this small pond looking for creatures. Let's see what we can find. Follow me. All right, let's see if we can find thing under this rock. Oh, wow, look at this. This is a crawdad. Now, usually, you find these little guys in the water. Um, however, this guy was on land. I'm guessing because he thought his house was drying up. Ooh, he's pinching me. Not very hard, though. He probably thought his house was drying up. There's another one right here. These guys um, decided that since the water level was going down, they were just going to burrow their little tunnel under this rock and hopefully stay um, nice and cool until winter time when the rains would come and fill up their pool again. It's very cool. You don't usually see them out of the water like this. Now, they've got... These little antennas right here, and when they're underwater, they, they use that to find food. And the big pinches are here to kind of help eat the food. I think I'm going to put these guys back in the water so they can... Ooh, pinching me, and he's pinching the other one. I don't think it'd be safe for me to try to put them back under there because I'm actually squishing with the rocks. So I'm going to put them in the water, not letting go of his friend. Let's go. Come on, buddy. There you go. See if we can find something else. Right. Oh, come here. This is this is cool. All right. So, if you see this mound right here, this is where the crawfish actually dug their little burrow. And the see this kind of the outline of this right here, that's where the soil underneath was pushed up by the crawdads, so that they would kind of have a, a airtight barrier that would keep them moist throughout the rest of the summer. And if I can lift this up, let's see if they're. Oh yeah. And they dug down to water level right there, and they're living right in there. That's cool. Healthy crawfish. Now, I just flipped over this rock. There's yeah. a ton of crawdads under crawdads. here. I don't want to disturb them, so I can put the rock back over them when I'm done. This is um, bunches of little crawdads, and here's these egg sacs. And I don't know what kind they are, so I'm not going to remove them for closer view of the camera. It's pretty interesting. This is a good ecosystem. Oh! This is a long-toed salamander. This is the only adult long-toed salamander I've ever come across. This is really cool. Sitting right there under this rock. Now, I didn't expect to find these here. Now, this salamander, I don't think those eggs belong to this salamander. This is a terrestrial species, however, in the winter... They lay their eggs in the pond, and that's probably why he's here. He was probably a larvae, which is the second stage of the salamander when it hatches from the eggs. Now, um, as larvae, they grow up, and when they get about this size, they lose their gills, which is what they use to breathe when they're in the water. And they come out here, they stay underground for the rest of the year, and then when the rains come, they crawl back into the water, and they lay their own, they lay their own eggs. Now this guy, I don't see any gill buds. When they come out on land at first, they sometimes have gill buds, which are just little what's left of the gills. This guy, um, you can't see it very well, but when they get bigger, they have yellow, very, very vibrant yellow stripes down their back. Um, very pretty salamander. I've had very poor luck finding these in the past up until very recently where I realized where to look. Never found them in this area before. But this is a very cool find. It shows the the water especially is healthy because amphibians like this cannot survive in uh, contaminated water. They need to have moisture on their skin to survive. If their water, if their skin gets dry, they can die very easily. This long-toed salamander, their scientific name is Ambistoma macrodactylum. Don't know if that's of any interest to you guys. Just thought it was kind of cool. I'm going to put him back under his rock. We have some mounds, and what those are, are that's an another example of where the crawfish have pushed up the dirt to make a little airtight thing. And they're under the ground there, probably at water level, just waiting for more water to come, fill up this pond, and so they can come out of their burrows and resume their foraging on the bottom of the lake. Okay. This right here... 
is the exoskeleton of a dragonfly larvae. Dragonflies lay their eggs in the water, and come to think of it, that might have been the eggs that we found over there. Could have been. But the eggs hatch into larvae. The larvae eat just about anything they can catch, including baby frogs, tadpoles. And dragonfly larvae come out of the water, sit there for a little while, and then probably usually at nighttime, they burst through. You can see where he came through right there. That little hole in the back. They, he crawled out of there, let his wings dry, and as soon as they were hard and stiff, he flew. He flew away. This is pretty cool. This looks to be some sort of. It's definitely some sort of snake shed skin. Um, when snakes get to a certain size, their skin can no longer hold them, so they shed the outer layer so they can expand more and basically grow. I'm guessing this snake looks like he has pretty good sized eyes. I'm guessing this was either a garter snake or maybe a green racer. It doesn't look like it has a rattle down here so it's probably not a rattlesnake but based on the large eyes I'm guessing this was a baby green racer or a baby garter snake. Uh, green racers are some of the fastest snakes when you first catch them, they will do everything in their power to bite you, and that's not very much fun. Garter snakes will also bite you, but they calm down quite a bit um, more quickly. Garter snakes also um, poop on you, which I don't enjoy. Um, when an animal poops on you, that's called musking, um, especially if it's for defense. This looks like it's pretty recent, so we might actually find the snake that left this. Let's keep going. <laughs> snake that I wanted to catch today. Yes. This is a, ooh, it's moving around quite a lot. This is the Western Yellow-Bellied Racer, or Green Racer. Um, I just flipped over that rock there, and I'm holding him right behind the head so he does not bite me, because these snakes will bite for, ooh, look at that, right there. Look at that. Now this snake, this is the snake that I most wanted to catch today. Caught him right into that rock. Don't know how we overlooked that rock on the way here. I can almost guarantee it he was there the entire time. And I'm glad we did not come across him slithering along the ground. Look at that. Look at that. He is just begging me to put my finger in his mouth. I'm just gonna do it just to see what it feels like. Ooh, that's sharp. Dang. Now, fortunately for me, these snakes are not poisonous. He's got some sharp little teeth there. <laughs> These snakes are incredibly fast. And you can see why they call them the western yellow belly. Because, right, especially by the throat there. Don't want to give him too much room because he's going to whip around and bite me again. Um, I'm glad I did not come across this snake scurrying across the ground because he probably would have been more inclined to bite and a lot harder to catch. Now when I let him go, I'll show you just how fast they are. These snakes are here along this water line catching anything they can eat. Crawfish, frogs, lizards, uh, probably even smaller snakes. I've seen pictures of them eating rattlesnakes. Um, when these snakes are young, um, they have very different colors. They are almost rattlesnake designed. They have, um, this guy is obviously an adult. They can get a little bit bigger than this. This is about as big as they get. One very cool thing about these snakes is when they slither, they slither with their head off the ground. And a lot of snakes don't do that. They slither with their head off the ground so they can see prey and potential predators. Um, now these snakes have very prominent scales. Unlike other snake species where the scales might be blended in, you can see them very well on this snake. And I love green racers, um, or western yellow-bellied racers. They are uh, primarily diurnal, which means they're awake in the daytime. 
and I would release him right into that rock, but to show you guys just how fast they are, I am going to put this snake on the ground. The snake can probably smell its hole, and there's lots of other holes with its tongue. So I'm going to set him on the ground here, and he's going to take off like a rocket. Um, you might want to come closer for this. This is going to be kind of cool. One, two, three. Look at that. That is one fast snake. And notice how its color blends perfectly into its surroundings. I think that's probably the best thing we're going to find here today. I am very happy to have had the chance to share this with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I taught you guys something. As always, be safe, be smart, and have a lot of fun when you're out there catching stuff. Thank you guys for watching.